I stood before the looming, decrepit asylum, its walls crumbling and windows shattered, a stark silhouette against the moonlit sky. It had been decades since anyone dared tread within its forsaken corridors, but I was drawn to its haunting presence. A strange compulsion gripped me, urging me to step inside to uncover the secrets that had long been buried within its decaying walls. With a deep breath, I pushed open the rusty entrance doors, the creaking sound echoing through the still night air. The air was heavy with an unsettling silence, broken only by the faint rustling of leaves and the distant hoot of an owl. As I ventured further into the asylum, the darkness seemed to cling to me like a suffocating shroud. My flashlight cut through the gloom, revealing the remnants of the asylum's former inhabitants. Shattered furniture, peeling wallpaper, and forgotten medical equipment. Each step I took echoed with a hollow sound, as if the very floors were reluctant to carry my weight. I could almost feel the weight of the past pressing down on me, as if the tormented souls that had once resided here were watching, waiting. The air grew colder and my breath misted before me. I tightened the collar of my jacket, trying to ward off the chill that seemed to seep into my bones. As I turned a corner, my flashlight beam flickered, casting eerie shadows that danced along the walls. It was then that I heard it, a faint, distant whisper. My heart quickened and I strained my ears to catch the words. They were unintelligible, a ghostly murmur that seemed to rise from the very walls themselves. I followed the whispers moving deeper into the asylum's heart. The corridors twisted and turned, a labyrinthine maze that seemed designed to confound and entrap. The whispers grew louder, more urgent, as if they were beckoning me forward, guiding me toward some hidden truth. My footsteps echoed like thunder in the silence as I entered a large chamber. In the center of the room stood an old wooden chair, its frame worn and weathered. My flashlight illuminated a thick layer of dust that coated the seat, but it was the walls that held my attention. They were covered in a mosaic of faded drawings, faces contorted in anguish, eyes hollow and vacant. It was as if the very essence of suffering had been etched onto those walls. The whispers seemed to crescendo, filling the room with an otherworldly chorus of voices. I clutched my ears, the sound becoming almost unbearable. And then, as suddenly as they had begun, the whispers ceased. The room plunged into silence once more, broken only by the sound of my ragged breathing. My flashlight beam flickered again and I turned to leave the room, my heart pounding. But as I reached for the doorknob, a handprint materialized on the dusty surface. It was as if someone had pressed their hand against the door, leaving behind a chilling reminder of their presence. I stumbled back, my pulse racing. The asylum had a hold on me, a grip that refused to let go. A guttural growl resonated through the chamber, the very walls seeming to vibrate with the sound. My flashlight flickered once more, and when the light returned, I found myself no longer alone. A figure stood before me, its form hazy and indistinct. It radiated a palpable sense of malevolence, and I felt its eyes bore into me, piercing my very soul. I opened my mouth to scream, but no sound emerged. It was as if the air had been sucked from my lungs, leaving me gasping for breath. The figure moved closer, its movements jerky and unnatural. It reached out a hand, its fingers elongated and twisted like gnarled branches. The handprint on the door had been its mark, its way of announcing its presence. I tried to flee, but my legs felt like lead, rooted to the spot. The figure's touch was icy cold, seeping into my skin like a venomous frost. Images flashed before my eyes, visions of pain and suffering of faces contorted in agony. The figure was a vessel of the asylum's torment, a conduit for the anguish that had consumed its inhabitants. With a final surge of adrenaline, I tore myself away from the figure's grasp and stumbled back, my breath coming in ragged gasps. I turned and ran, the asylum's corridors blurring as I raced toward the exit. The air seemed to thicken around me, the darkness becoming an oppressive force that pressed against me from all sides. As I burst through the entrance doors, I collapsed onto the ground, my chest heaving. The moonlight washed over me, a soothing balm that dispelled the lingering shadows. I looked back at the asylum one last time, its malevolent presence now confined to the decaying structure. I knew then that I had glimpsed something beyond the realm of the living, a darkness that defied comprehension. The asylum had shown me the depths of its despair, the echoes of its past that still reverberated through time. And as I walked away from its haunting embrace, I couldn't help but feel that a part of it would forever remain with me, a whisper in the depths of my mind, 
a chilling reminder of the horrors that lie hidden in the shadows.